Welcome to CATS Tutorials and in this video I'll be covering practice problem 3.6 from the fourth edition of Fundamentals of Electric Circuits. Now the question says we should find IO. So from the start IO is indicated there. Now if you look at I3 it goes all the way around and then at this point there's nothing which it shares so it doesn't share any resistor here it doesn't share anything with any other mesh at that point so this tells us that essentially i3 is equals to io or io is equals to i3 whichever way you decide to to put it right so yeah just to go through that again. So I3 goes all the way and it goes in the same direction with the IO at this point. So this is I3, it's gonna go like that, it's gonna go like that, it's gonna go like that, and then it goes all the way around. So I3 is equals to IO. IO is equals to I3. This video is sponsored by my parents. That's hilarious. Okay, so let's continue to solve the problem. So to solve this problem successfully, we have three meshes. So we need all the equations for all the meshes, even though we're only interested in finding I3, because I want to use Kramer's rule to find I3, right? So let's start with uh, the mesh that has, that has I1, that has I1, right? So a mesh, if you recall from the textbook, um, is a loop which does not contain any other loops within it. So we have three meshes in this case, and they are distinctly labeled according to the currents which are in them. So starting at the mesh, my neighbor's chickens, man. Okay, so starting uh, at mesh I1, starting at I1, we have, starting with the voltage source which you have here, our equation is going to be negative 20. Um, these chickens, bro. Okay. So, hmm, sorry about that. So, if you look at this point, we have I1 going up there, right? So, I1 goes into that node or at that point, and it splits into I3 and it splits into I3 and a current which goes there. So now, when we reach this 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 point here, let's say plus four, what do we have in the brackets? So this current here is basically going to be equals to, so we're gonna say um, I1 is equals to some, some current plus I3, which is what is happening here at this point. So I1 comes into this node and it splits into that and I3. So now I want to multiply four with that unknown current which goes there. So this unknown current is therefore equals to I1 subtract subtract I3, right? So that's what we're gonna have at the four, right? So four I1 minus I3. And we move on to this. This is the same case. At this node here, I1 goes in and it splits into I2, which goes in that direction, and an unknown current there. So we have an unknown current plus I2. So I1 is equal to an unknown current plus I2. So this unknown current, which goes through this two ohm resistor, which is shared between the first and the second uh, mesh, is essentially equals to I1 subtract I2, right? So that's what we're going to have for the two ohms, which is shared between the two meshes. So we're going to have I1 subtract I2. That is basically how you form your mesh equations. You always have to check how the current splits and how they're actually formed. So that's why we have these for the shared resistors, right? So now you just have to count your terms and make sure they are in keeping with the number of branches which you have in your mesh. So we have that, that, and that. Those are three branches. So we have that, that, and that. Those are three terms in the equation. And therefore, we equate all of this to zero. All right? Since these are the voltages in a loop, which should sum up to zero, KVL. That still, that still applies here. 
applies everywhere basically. So I'm not going to simplify this now. I'm going to simplify it later. So let's just call it uh, equation one. Moving on to mesh two or equation two, the same thing applies. But in this case, if you look, this I2 is going in the opposite direction of the current which goes through the shared two ohms, right? So it's going to be the negative of that. And we said the, the shared current between uh, meshes one and two is equals to that. So now that I2 goes in the opposite direction, it's going to be the negative of this. And the negative of this is going to be I2 subtract I1. And that is what we're going to have in the case of the second mesh, because it goes in the opposite direction while that current is actually going down. This is going up, I2 is going up. So we're going to have two. This is the second mesh. This is the second equation. We're going to have two. Then I'm going to say I2 minus I1. Then I'm going to say the same thing applies here. We have, so let's erase this just so I show you up here. So at this node here, at this node, or let's look at, let's look at this node here, right? So I2 is coming in, right? I2 is coming in, and it shares this resistor with the third, with the third um, mesh. So when the third mesh comes into here, right? That's I3 coming in, in there. So this is going to be split into a current that goes there and a current that goes there. So we already know this current here. This is I2 that is going there, but we don't know whatever that is. So that question mark there um, plus I2. So I3 splits into this unknown current and I2, right? So this unknown value, which goes, um, so this unknown value, which goes through the eight ohms is actually equals to I3 subtract I2, right? It's actually equals to that. But if you look at the direction of I2, it's actually going like in the opposite direction of, it, of that. It's going in the opposite direction of whatever that is. And therefore, it's going to be the negative of that. And the negative of that is I2 minus I3, right? So you're going to say two, um, you're going to say two, what's this? Two, this is what we have at this point, where we have that shared between those two, right? And then we're going to proceed to have I'm going to proceed to have that over there, which is plus 8, right? Plus 8, and then I'm going to have I2 subtract I3, because it is the negative of this defined current which you have there, right? So instead of I3 subtract I2, I'm going to have I2 subtract I3, because it's the negative of this unknown current. So I2 goes in the negative direction of that current, so it's going to be the negative of it, right? So we have that, we have that, then we come here. It encounters, I2 encounters the negative terminal of this first. So we're going to have negative um, 10. We're going to have negative 10 multiplied by IO. So we said IO is equal to I3. So we can just simply substitute I3 in here. It goes to zero. And that is our second equation. Now, finally, moving on to our final equation, third equation. We are going to have I3 in that mesh, right? So starting from the top here, nothing else shares this resistor. So I3 essentially goes through it, right? So six I3 starting from the top and coming to these two shared ones, the same thing applies. So now I3 is going in the positive direction or in the same direction with this split current here. So this split current as we correctly identified is equals to I3 subtract I2. So when we reach the eight, when we reach the eight, it's going to be I3 subtract I2, right? And when we reach the four, the same thing is going to apply. So I3 is going in there, and it's going to split into some, uh, into I1, that is I1 going down there, and it's going to split into another current which goes through there, right? So, at this point, we're going to have 
it's also going in the same direction. So at that point, we're going to have I3 subtract I1, right? So we're going to say plus 4 I3 subtract I1 is equals to 0. So that is our third equation. Let's now proceed to simplify these so that we can ultimately um, fit them in a matrix and do Kramer's rule. So let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, you're fine. So starting with the first equation, let's just add the like terms. We have four, we have two, that's gonna be six, right? So that's gonna be six I1. And let's see, let's see, let's see, we have negative uh, two I2, so we're gonna have negative two I2. And we have 4i3, right? We have 4i3, that is the only i3 we have in that equation. So negative 4i3, that's what we're going to have. Then we have this constant here, which we're going to take to the other side of the equal sign. And it's going to be positive, all right? It's going to be positive, so 20. That's what we have there. And the second equation, moving on to the second equation, focusing on i1, we only have negative, negative um, 2i1. And going to I2, let's see, let's see, we have 2, we have 8, so that's going to be 10, I2, so it's going to be 10, I2, and then moving on to I3, we only have negative 8 and negative 10, so that's going to be negative 18, I3, right? And let's look for any constants, we don't have any constants, so all of this equating to 0. And finally, for the last equation, let's check I1 first. So I1, we only have negative 4. So we only have negative 4 I1, which is over here. Then I2, we have negative 8. So we have negative 8 I2. And finally, for I3, we have 6. We have 8, which is 14, plus 4, which is 18. So we have plus 18 I3. It equals to 0, right? So these are the three equations. These are the three equations. Fine. So we are going to transform these equations into matrices. So we can perform Kramer's rule to solve for I3 or IO. Basically the same thing. So since we have this, let's write it up here. So we always have it. So AX equals B, which is the matrix form for Kramer's rule. So the coefficients of each of the equations or the coefficients of each of the variables are going to go in the A matrix. If you are not familiar with Kramer's rule, I do have a tutorial up on Kramer's rule, which you can look at quickly. It's quite long though, <laughs> but yeah, whatever. So six, we have six, we have negative two, we have negative four in the A matrix. That's the first equation. We have negative two, we have 10, we have negative 18, in the second equation, we have negative 4, we have negative 8, and finally 18. In the last equation, and that forms the A matrix, and then the X matrix, or the variable matrix, we have I1, I2, I3, which is equals to the constants on the other side of the equal sign, so that's 20, 0, 0, right? So 20, 0, 0, that's what we have. So let me just quickly erase all of this. Just quickly erase all of this to create space to do Kramer's rule. All right. So erasing all of that, erasing all of that. So now Kramer's rule says xk is equal to determinant k divided by the determinant of the A matrix. So we want to find, so we, we found out that IO is equal to I3. So I3 is therefore equals to the third determinant divided by the determinant of the A matrix. So let's first find the determinant of the A matrix, which is our determinant uh, of the A matrix. It's going to be 6, negative 2, negative 4, negative 2, 10, negative 18, negative 4, negative 8, 18. So the determinant of this matrix is the determinant of the A matrix, the determinant of the matrix as it is without shifting anything. So doing that, we're going to have equals to 6 um, multiplied by 10 multiplied by 18, negative 
8, uh, negative 18. Second term is going to be negative negative 2 multiplied by uh, negative 2 multiplied by 18. Subtract negative 4, subtract uh, multiplied by negative 18. And then finally, you're going to have plus, uh, plus negative 4 multiplied by uh, negative 2 multiplied by negative 8. Uh, subtract 10 multiplied by negative 4. So that is going to be your determinant of the A matrix. And punching that into a, um, a calculator, let me just do that quickly. Just to make sure I have everything uh, as it should be. So it's going to be 6 multiplied by 180 uh, minus um, 8 multiplied by 18 um, plus 2. Negative 36, um, and we come to um, negative 54. Um, is it? Is it? Nope, 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 nope. That is not true. It's going to be negative 52, bro. Because 18 times 2 is 36. 36 times 2. What? 72. Okay. <laughs> that is so funny. That is hilarious. Hilarious. Okay. So, yes. So the final term is going to be negative 4 multiplied by uh, 16 and plus 14. And. Okay, so punching that into your calculator should give you negative 224. Right. Now, since we said Grimm's rule says this, so you're going to move on, you can jump straight into finding determinant 3. So determinant 3 is essentially formed by moving the B matrix to the third column of the A matrix. So it's going to come here. So it's going to be a determinant of 6, negative 2, negative 4, negative 2, 10, negative 8, negative 4. Uh, nope. At this point, we're going to have the B matrix, which is 20, 0, 0. All right. So we're going to find the determinant of that to find determinant 3. Right. So starting up there, you're going to have 6 multiplied by 0. Minus zero, then we're gonna have negative, negative two multiplied by zero, minus zero. Then I'm gonna finally have twenty, finally have twenty multiplied by negative two multiplied by negative eight, subtract ten multiplied by negative four, right? Which is gonna be equals to so this is zero, that is zero, we're gonna have twenty multiplied by sixteen. So, uh, 16 plus 40, which is 56. So we're going to have 20 multiplied by 56. And the answer to that is 1120. And that is the determinant 3, right? So now we're going to solve the, uh, the question. So we have determinant 3 as 1120. And we have the determinant of the A matrix as negative uh, 224. Punching that into your calculator is going to give you negative 5. So I3 equals to I0 is equals to negative 5 amperes.